Alrighty folks, today we are learning about workflows. We're joined by Sebastian, say hello, Bash, and uh, let's dive into it. High Level's workflow builder is probably my favorite part of the software. And the reason for that is it allows you to save so much time every single day. However, before we dive into automations actually using the workflow builder, one really important thing to understand is pipelines and opportunities, because if you don't have this set up, you're not using workflows to their full capability. Basically how these work is you've got the opportunities dashboard here where you can set up all of these different stages for people to come through the simpler the better typically and the way that you set those up is by coming to pipelines all leads and then you can go through and you know set these up the way that they're supposed to be set up by the way what we're going to be going over today a lot of it comes from my snapshot which is free for affiliates if you're already a high level user you can upgrade under me to get it and if you're brand new you can get all of my templates plus a free course two free courses actually to help, to help you get started with high level right away and get things squared away so for the purposes of this video let's go ahead and make a new pipeline that is very simple. We're just going to have an opt-in stage and then we're going to have a hot lead stage. So this means you know, somebody that's a bit more hot than just an opt-in. And then we're going to have a closed stage and a not closed stage. Sound good? So we've just got these four pipeline stages here. We're going to name this the simple pipeline. And now we're going to go into the workflow builder. So let's go to automations, create workflow. We've got all of these recipes or templates we can choose from, but we're learning how to start from scratch today. So what I'm going to do is hit continue and here we are inside of the workflow builder. Now, the first thing we need to understand here is settings and make sure we have everything set up correctly. So we have allow re-entry, which means somebody can enter this workflow again and again, if we allow them to, and we have stop on response. So this ends the workflow for a contact if the contact responds to a message that is sent from this workflow. So any response to any of the messages here, and it's going to stop the workflow. Then we've got the time zone that we can set specifically for this. We've got time windows. We can say only let this fire between eight and five Monday through Friday, if we want, or we can turn that off and then sender details from name and from email. This will make sense in a second. And then conversations, if we want all the conversations that go through this workflow to automatically be marked as red, then we would hit this here. All right, beautiful. So that is settings. Now let's come back here to the builder and start looking at the meat and potatoes of the workflow builders, the triggers and actions. So first of all, you need to understand that every workflow starts with a trigger and then it will trigger a set of actions, which is here. So if we click on the triggers, we'll see all the triggers here. If we click on actions, we'll see all the actions here, okay? So on the trigger side, we can do things relating to the contact, certain events, appointments, opportunities, which we just set up, affiliate stuff, membership stuff, payments, Shopify, IVR, which is like, hey, press one to connect to sales, press two for customer service, and then communities as well, which these two are pretty much brand new. Very cool. So that's on the trigger side. I'll show you the action side here in a minute, but let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the possibilities here with triggers. For our first workflow, what we're going to do is trigger it based off of an event. And I would say this is probably the most common reason that workflows are used for. So as you can see here, most of these things are coming from somebody submitting some sort of form into high level. That's a great option for us. Let's go ahead and hit form submitted and we're going to say form is, and I've got a few forms already loaded into this account, but let's say, for example, this is a simple form. Somebody submitted name, phone, email. That's the trigger. Now, once we set that up, it's actually giving us an opportunity to add another trigger. And I've never reached the limit as to the number of triggers you can add here. So let's say we want the same set of actions to happen after the initial trigger for a different form. We can go ahead and select form again, and then we'll say form is, and then we select a different one, the calendar form, for example. And then if I wanted to add any other triggers here, I could as well. So now this begs the question, what's going to happen after the form is submitted? Let's say this is a form on your website or a form coming from an ad. Well, the first thing we want to do is a little bit complicated, depends on the situation. But for me, the first thing I want to do is update that pipeline. I want it to look immaculate. I want it to be perfect. And there's actually a lot of evidence that shows that if those pipelines aren't set up correctly, the data in them isn't accurate. A lot of CRM clients churn because they don't feel like it's accurately representing their business. So this is crucial to set up correctly. So let's go ahead and hit the add action button here. And what I can do is type in the word opportunity and it's going to say create or update opportunity or remove opportunity. Those are my two options. In this case, we want to create or update that opportunity. Now, remember our pipeline we set up. There we go. Simple pipeline in pipeline stage opt-in. Now the opportunity name, we can go ahead and hit this tag thing here and very simply just hit contact full name. So the opportunity is going to be named after the contact, not anything else. That's the thing that makes the most sense in this case. But if you wanted to put something else on there, you totally could like contact first name, website form, 
doesn't really make sense to me to put it there, but if you wanted to put it there, you could. There's a better place. I'll show you in just a minute how to put it. Next up, we have opportunity source. So this is where we say this is where the lead actually came from. So in this case, we may have them coming from two different spots, which is why we could do something like going to, let's say, attribution, and then we could do our URL. So the specific URL that they came from will populate here because we selected that inside of this merge tag section here, which is awesome. Now, lead value. In this case, we have a concrete lifting company, like they make the sidewalk flat. And to me, a lead isn't worth anything until they actually book an appointment. So I'm going to say the lead value is zero. I'm just going to leave it blank there. And on status, I'm going to mark this as open. That means they haven't been closed, but they haven't said no either. So it's an open opportunity. That's what the status refers to, the opportunity status. Then we have the option to select allow opportunity to move into a previous stage in the pipeline or allow duplicate opportunities. We don't have to turn either of these on. Typically, people don't move backwards in the pipeline for me, but if it makes sense for your specific scenario to turn either of these on, go ahead and do it. Beautiful. Now, a quick tip for you here. You'll see that this says creator update opportunity. So it's just named it like a very generic thing, but what's helpful when it comes to workflows and cuts down on the amount of time of clicking in and out of each one of these actions is actually naming this properly. So coming through and updating this with create opt-in opportunity, hit save, beautiful. If you want to name that something else, go ahead and do it. In the triggers, we should probably do the same thing. So instead of just form submitted, we do simple form, save trigger, and here we do calendar form. Beautiful. All right, so now that we've created the opportunity, the next thing that I like to do is add any relevant tags that people might want. For example, let's say this person, if they come through the simple form or the calendar form, we want them to have the tag simple form or calendar form. Now, in this case, we're triggering from both of those forms, so it doesn't really make sense. So let's go ahead and remove the calendar form just for clarity's sake here and say, okay, these are only coming from the simple form. So for the tag I'm going to add, it's going to be simple form. And that'll help me know where these leads are coming from. And you probably wouldn't end up calling yours simple form. You'd probably call it something much better, but you know, for demonstration purposes today, hopefully this helps. Again, this is just said add tags. We want to make sure we're going to say simple form tag, beautiful. Any other tags that you want to add, this really comes in handy down the line when you're trying to sort certain contacts by where they came from. So I highly recommend adding any relevant tags here. Don't worry. You can always come back and add this step later if you don't do it now, but it is definitely recommended. All right. So now that we've updated the opportunity, we've added a tag. What's next? In my mind, the next thing should be notifying the person that's going to follow up with this lead. So in this case, I'm going to do something called an internal notification. So this is super important that you select this one and not, for example, an SMS, because if you send the SMS, it's going to send to the contact and not to somebody else. But if you select internal notification, number one, it will let you choose whether you want to do an email an in-app notification or an SMS, but it will also let you choose who you're going to send it to. So in this case, I'm going to select email and in the from name, I'm going to put the name of my company. So let's say streamline is the name of my white labeled SAS and the email in this case can be pretty much whatever I want it to be. I literally could do hello kitty 97 at gmail.com. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do like info at streamline.io. And then I can select here, do I want to send to all users, an assigned user, a custom email, or a particular user? In my case, I typically like sending to the custom email because it allows you to send to multiple people by comma delimiting. So I could say help at concrete lifting.com, comma info at concrete lifting.com, et cetera. And maybe they're not using users on the account, but I can still send the email to them. However, if everyone is added to the account and you want to send the notification to everyone that's in the account, you just go to here and hit all users or a particular user or assigned user if that's something you'd like to do. Then in the subject line, we'd say something like new lead exclamation mark. And then we come in here and write a little blurb about this new lead. So I'll write this and show you what I have in a second. Okay, beautiful. So what I've put here is, hey, location name team. So that's going to pull the name of the sub account. You have a new lead that came through the simple form. Their contact info is below. And then I put these tags in. And then I said this at the end, we're sending them automated messages Currently, you'll get another notification if they're a hot lead, the team at Streamline. So depending on what setup you have, if you have AI following up the leads, if you need them to contact them immediately, you would kind of switch this towards the end to have a call to action. But where usually we're going to send a couple messages before the human is even able to reach out, we'll just say something like this and they can follow up with them on their own time. Or if they're very hot, then we'll say, hey, please call them immediately. This is going to be a good opportunity for you. And then we're going to name that internal notification, email all users. All right, now for the exciting part, we're going to actually reach out to the contact that's inquiring about concrete lifting services. So I'm going to go to SMS here. It's going to say send SMS and I'm going to write an SMS. I'll show you what I come up with at the end. 
All right, awesome. So this is what I came up with here. Hey, contact first name. First name being super important that you put that instead of any of these other values here, like full name or last name. So you're interested in getting your concrete lifted. Do you mind sending me the zip code of your property? Question mark. If you don't want text from us, reply out. And this is a little bonus tip for you. The reason I put out here is because this isn't recognized as a spam keyword from Twilio. And Twilio is the texting provider of high level. So if you get a bunch of people replying stop, too many people, it's actually going to block that number with Twilio. You're going to get your reputation damage. You just don't want that happening. So instead you can have the keyword out trigger through an automation and workflow builder. Do not disturb on SMS. And that doesn't affect your reputation with Twilio, but it does stop the messages from sending. You are legally required to do this. And by the way, if you're getting something like this added at the end of every single message, it's because you need to go into settings and turn that off in the business profile. High level has that on by default for compliance reasons. Now I want you to pay attention to what we're doing here in this first message that we're not asking a ton of different questions. We haven't sent a wall of text and I'm not going straight for the jugular, like when would you like to get set up? Instead, I'm asking another question, maybe one that they didn't answer on the form so that I can confirm they're even in my convenience radius and so that I can confirm I actually have the right number for them. So if they don't respond with their zip code, I can send them another text later on. But if they do, I know I have the right number. I know we're on the right track and this is probably going to be a good lead. So I'm going to go ahead and name this SMS zip code question mark as kind of a short form of what's going on here. And then we'll move on to the next part of this. Now, I know I said when we sent this SMS, this was going to be one of the most exciting things that we did all day, but I think it's about to get even more exciting because we're going to add an if else or a conditional step. So if I type in if else and I go here, it's actually not going to allow me to do what I need to do here because I haven't set up what's called a wait step first. So I'm going to hit here and hit wait. And we're going to wait, I don't know, 15 minutes. We literally texted them immediately after they opt in. So if they don't reply back within 15 minutes, I think we're safe sending another text here. Now, currently this is set up as a time delay, but what we actually want to do is wait for a specific specific thing to happen, like the contact replying. And we're going to say, have they responded to the zip code question? Again, timeout in 15 minutes. Awesome. Now we go to the if else step and we say, if the contact has replied, they've replied at all. So we say true, then we're going to do one thing. And if they haven't, then we're going to do another thing. Now by default, this is going to be named branch. I don't like it named branch. So I'm going to say, yes, they have responded. And on the condition, I'm going to say reply question mark. And on the wait step, I'm going to make sure we know it's 15 minutes. Now, if they have responded, we want to do a set of things. If they haven't responded, we're going to do a set of other things. In this case, let's say they have responded. We're going to send another text that says, thank you. I'll give you a call shortly to schedule your free estimate, Adam. Very cool. So this is quite simple. As you can see, if they've responded, we say yes. We send them another SMS that says we're going to call them soon. If they haven't responded within 15 minutes, let's send them another text and say, let me know. Smiley face. Now, this is really smart because it's so simple. It sounds like something another human would say. It's not like a very businessy type text. If you saw the notification that just said, let me know, you'd be thinking, who is this person? What do I owe them? It's a good three words to include inside of that text. And honestly, a lot of times it is good to stop right here because you don't know what you don't know about workflows yet. And setting up something too complicated when you're just going to end up going back and redoing it over and over again, isn't smart. So start small. However, if you wanted to go a little bit bigger with this, there's a couple things we could do. First of all, if somebody's responded, we should add them to the hot leads column because they are a little bit of a hotter lead if they go through that. So what I'm going to do here is after this text, go ahead and say creator update opportunity in the simple pipeline. And we're going to say this is a hot lead. The opportunity name, source, lead value, et cetera, will just inherit from before. So we can just leave those and I'll hit save action and go ahead and call this mark as hot lead. It would also be good to email, like we said we were going to do before, the team and say, hey, we have a hot lead that's provided their zip code. We said we're going to call them soon. Go ahead and give them a call. So I'll do another internal notification. And in this case, let's do an SMS. We'll go ahead and do a particular user, select our friend at J Dinklage Morgoon here and go ahead and say, Hey, location name team. You've got a hot lead that wants a phone call and go ahead and provide the contact full name and the contact phone number to call them. That way they can get this on the go and just give them the call immediately if that's what's needed. Additionally, something crazy that we could do instead of sending the internal notification, we could go ahead and do a call. So if I hit this, the call whisper, I could say call from Streamline, which again is the name of my white label. And then you can see where this call is going to go up here. If the contact has been assigned to a user, this event will call the user and play the whisper message if the contact is 
is unassigned, this event will call the number listed in settings, company tab, company phone field, and play the whisper message. If the person who answers the call presses any number key during the call, we will dial the contact, and if they answer, we will bridge the call. So what this looks like in practice is your client getting a call that says, hey, call from Streamline, press any key to connect, and if they hit that, then it's going to bridge the call. It's going to call that lead automatically. Record it inside of high level. It's just a beautiful thing. It forces your clients to take the right actions that they say they're going to take. Some people don't want this on, but it's really cool to know that it is there. Now on this other side, if this person doesn't respond, what are we going to do? Well, if they do respond to this, let me know thing here, that's important and it informs what we're going to do next. So I'm going to add another wait step here. And in this case, I'm going to wait one hour and then we'll go ahead and do an if else step. And we'll do this one as yes and say, if contact replied, if that is a true condition, then what we can do is go ahead and add a go to step. So that will add them a right to this particular part of the workflow. So I've just drawn a line there. Very cool. And if they still haven't responded, this is where we start to do some more continuous follow up. So I could send them an email and type up whatever that email is going to look like. I could put the call action here as well and just say non hot lead from streamline. I could wait for, let's say three more hours and send another text the same day. Just do a simple, hey, contact first name you there, etc. I'll go ahead and go to another workflow here and show you some of these long follow up sequences that I've built. So in this case, if somebody opts in and they just don't respond, nothing's happening, then we continue to follow up for every single day for 10 days. As you can see, all these wait steps and then everything that we're asking them. And then we continue to go, you know, every week, then every month, and we just continue texting them for a long, long time. That's pretty fun to set up, but in practice, it doesn't work as well as you think it might. Uh, it's really about getting that speed to lead going and making sure that your clients are following up the leads immediately. And then you can save all of the rest of the ones that didn't come through, put them in the did not close column and follow up with those later and include them in your holiday email blast or your holiday text blast, that type of thing. Now, I hope this has been super informative. I know that this blew my mind the first time I used it, but we've barely barely scratch the surface today, guys. Go ahead and look at all of the different triggers you can do in here. One of my favorite ones is the birthday reminder. Super tricky there. Very applicable to restaurants, other service-based industries. Membership, if you have courses, there's tons of really cool ones here. Payments, uh, Shopify, if you're into e-commerce. Communities, if that's something you're running. And on the action side, we have all of these ones in contact, all of the ones in communication. So sending a messenger message, an Instagram DM, a WhatsApp message, conversation AI, which is a really big one I'll cover in another video here soon. And of course, some marketing analytics ones, payments, opportunities, communities, super, super helpful here. Guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. I've also got a full breakdown one hour long of how to use high level, all of the features. So I'll put that video up here so you can watch it. And again, if you'd like to upgrade or start using high level under me, I'd super appreciate it. And you'll get $8,000 worth of bonuses. So I'd love to see you in there. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.